Okay, so let's uh, continue on from there and start to think about, well, what is our media content strategy going to be? Okay, so we need to start thinking about our strategies, okay, which are going to start to inform a little bit more of understanding what's going to be the best vehicle to use because we know what we're trying to achieve. So the first thing we need to start thinking about is, well, what is the strategy? Okay, so we want to have a definition. Okay, so, you know, what is the strategy? How do we want to put it together? Then we're going to think about what's our content creation. Okay, so what are we going to do to create the content? And then we need to think about how we're going to measure engagement. Okay, so how we're going to make sure that people are looking at our message, understanding our message, interacting with the message, and then getting something out of it. Okay, so where's it all going to go together? All right, so what we start to think about there is um, probably the first thing we need to do is get that definition down then. And when we talk about the definition, um, you know, what we're trying to do is come up with an answer to specifically what does our audience want to see, hear, touch, taste, um, you know, feel, smell, think, etc. Okay, so what do we want um, them to have? Okay, is, is it something we just want them to see something? Uh, are we trying to change a thought pattern? Do we want them to try and taste our stuff? Okay, so... You know, we, you know, that's going to lead us obviously to a bit of a conversation. If it's tasting, then straight away we know. We want them to taste our new product and see if it tastes better. Okay, that's telling us straight away we're probably going to need to do handouts or some sort of samples, all right? And that's why we're trying to get to these points, to understand what we want to happen. All right, um, we need to think about what sort of engagement are we looking for. So um, what do we want to have happen just to create thought? Do we want to get in involved in that conversation? Ultimately, do we want to drive them to a position of actually trying um, our product or moving towards us as a service provider? Um, and we need to start thinking about, you know, what do we want to have happen? Do we just want to like, like our status on Facebook and spread the word, um, share, um, create a comment, um, create an inquiry, a sale? Um, you know, do we want to get some sort of advertising award? Are we trying to convert? Now, what are we trying to do? All right, so we really need to get a bit of an idea of you know, where is this going and, and, and how much effort we want to put into it. If all we're really doing is trying to get them to like our page on Facebook, that might be a lot easier than getting them to come and buy a multi-million dollar product, okay, obviously. Um, but it's just, it's going to shape a lot of our thinking later and make sure we're getting our bang for our buck and maybe not overthinking things. Um, the next thing is we start to think about um, with that definition, uh, what media vehicles have we selected or what are, what are the ones we're considering? Um, and what sort of engagement do they utilize? So how do people engage with that um, service and how do they engage with that media vehicle? Uh, once again, we're trying to get a clear message the whole way through. Uh, the next thought is, when I'm going through my definition, where can I source content from? So that information that's gonna go into the, um, the advertising activity and where can I get that information from? So what's gonna go in it and where am I gonna find that information? Um, and then we just need a bit of an outline for my strategic goals. So I'm starting to think about uh, what do I want to achieve? Um, when do I want to achieve it? Uh, what will success look like? Um, and how am I going to go about making sure that the, the media vehicles can deliver on that? Okay, so like my page on Facebook, um, you know, is, is my current media you know, campaign going to help me do that? Um, and also, you know, really thinking through how the whole thing's going to work. You know, once I've got all those things together, once I've really thought about, you know, making sure I'm selecting the right places, thought about creative content, I understand what I'm trying to achieve and what I want out of these people, what I want them to think, feel, taste, etc., and then what I want them to do, um, and I've got all those things considered, right, that's my content strategy done. Okay, so that takes us to the next phase about thinking about our content creation. All right, now when we get to the phase of content creation, what we're starting to think about there is once again, we're getting back to who is our audience, all right? How is the message or the content that we're gonna create relevant to that person and the media vehicle that they're using, okay? So once again, we're really getting to a point of having a really, really clear view of exactly who our target is, all right? If, if we go for very generic pictures of anyone between an 80-year-old and, and a five-year-old and everywhere in the middle, it's just gonna to get too vague and it gets too sort of um, hard to understand, hard to target, and then you just end up back in mass media or just throwing the message at everybody, hoping that it hits the mark and, and hoping things just work, which really isn't the conducive or you know, the, the best way to do it. It's just a, it's a big spend um, and it's gonna be really hard to track what happens next. So what you wanna do is you wanna start thinking about um, for each channel, start coming up with a bit of a persona. Okay, create a channel persona for each one of the media vehicles. So know who your target person is on that. Make sure you've got some real good detail on them. Make sure that you know what the average user is and hone in on that and find out who they are and go for it. 
Okay, so you can have different personas and have different media vehicles. Want to target the old people who are a bit like this, well, that's the channel we're going to use. Want to get people between this age and this age who are into whatever it is that you're into, that's the channel we're going to use for them. But we've got a really clear persona of what each one of those people are and how they engage with the media. Um, make sure your brand, okay, so how does your brand connect to that audience? Um, you know, are you seen as an old, reliable, stable brand? In which case, that's probably not going to be so great with the hip kids. Um, it might be very relevant, on the other hand, if you're like a bank and you want people to trust you and this sort of long tradition, etc. You know, so how is my brand perceived? You know, am I considered up to date? Am I considered a bit daggy and out of date? You know, where do I sit? Um, and also, I need to think about the content creation. Um, can, do I, can I source it within my organization or do I need to go uh, get someone from outside to come and give me a hand to start putting this stuff together? All right. So I need to think about that. Can I do it myself or is someone else going to have to help me? All right, now that content creation, it can take many forms. And as we talked about writing or text, okay, this is, might be the time when I need to start thinking about uh, developing my taglines, um, blog articles, um, thinking about copywriting my features and benefits, okay, so all those sort of statements, all that written text that I need to come up with. Um, you know, making sure that whoever does it, um, you know, has correct grammar, right spelling, right style of presentation, good prose, able to really talk to my audience in a language that they clearly understand. Um, whether that's a language they understand for their culture or subculture, or whether in fact it is an entirely different language. All right? Always got to make sure that's right. Um, nothing worse than, you know, sometimes you get some garbled stuff where, you know, language becomes an issue um, and you want your audience to read it and appreciate your message, not laugh at it. All right? The next thing I think about also is, you know, any images that need to be generated. Do I need images? Um, things like my logo, um, you know, the products, even understanding my team members, making sure they've got good pictures that relate to my industry. Um, you know, so all that sort of graphic stuff where people need to look at it. Um, any designs I may have worked on, etc. you know, make sure that we've got good imagery. Okay, because once again, if it's shot badly and you've got bad photos, poorly lit, whatever, okay, once again, the idea is that your customers look at you and find it professional, not look at you and have a bit of a giggle, wondering if you took the photo with a potato or something, you know, like, it's just bad images, uh, really not the way you want to go. And once again, um, you might also think about video production, and video production, sound imagery, um, all that's very good for evoking thoughts and feelings, okay, we can use the right music to either bring the tempo up and have very excited, or other music to bring the tempo down. We can use those sort of slow sweeping video shots to, to, to create a scene and feel or upbeat, vibrant, lots of things happen to create a bit of a party atmosphere in what we're doing. So we need to think about what's going to be working for our brand and what's going to be relevant to those people. So considerations when writing content is, you know, writing content for a blog or website. Look, there's a few basic narrative structures we need to think about if we're going to get back into those. So they should have a beginning, a middle and an end. Uh, the beginning should start to set the scene or create a visual image in the reader's mind, okay? So we want to summon up a bit of a thought. Uh, the middle bits, um, that's where, you know, um, characters or specific issues driving the story come in, you know, all our definitions, uh, the what, the how, you know, and, and creating tone, so the what, the how, the why. Um, and then we should get to an ending point where we're starting to summarise information, repeat the story back to them, uh, make sure that it's very clear about what we're doing and evoke a certain action, all right? So with that writing, a beginning, middle, and end to generate a bit of an outcome at the end, all right? And that's what we should be doing there. Um, so once again, with the images and video, making sure that the image is capturing the information that we want to convey, uh, making sure we've thought about what response do we want that photo to have. Um, is it an action photo where they're going, yeah, I really want that? Or is it a photo where they go, oh, that's really bad because we want them to donate money to our cause? Or, you know, what do we want to have happen when they see that photo? Do we want them to be angry, sad, happy, you know, want to be a part of it? What is it going to be? Um, you know, and what's the audience response we want? Same, same for video. Uh, what have we already got hanging around? Was it well shot? Are we able to reuse the same image? Remember, if we've got images that people have seen before, it starts to reinforce a message. You go, oh, yeah, I know that logo or whatever it happens to be. Um, so start thinking about, do you already have some video footage that might be really cool and sliced into something? Um, or do we need to create it? Uh, particularly for a young brand, anything filmed as you're starting up, it, it, you know, creates a bit of interest and a bit of excitement about what you're doing. Okay, video is really good for doing that. It's very quick to be able to um, start to shoot and you can get right out there and start to develop some up. So think about, are they really doing what you want? Images and video, evoke a response, get people feeling a certain way. Written text has a beginning, middle and an end. 
And, and that ending should be a call to action to get them to do something. Um, and that way we can make sure that all our content is, is starting to look pretty good and is appropriate to the audience, appropriate to what we want people to do, and is gonna fit on the vehicle that we're choosing to make sure we uh, put that through on. Great. Okay, so we've gone through all that concept of setting uh, what content we want and how it all needs to go. Uh, we started to think about media vehicles and all that. The next part that we need to do is, is, is to start setting some measures. Okay, and what I'm talking about there is measures of engagement, all right? So we want to know what people are doing or, or how many people we want, you know, what are the numbers, all right? We're putting there's a lot of message um, out there. We're, we're spending a lot of time and money conveying an idea. Um, now we need to make sure, well, how are we going to track what happens next? Um, so what I start to think about is um, I need a measurable outcome and I need to decide what that measurable outcome is going to be. And it could be pretty simple stuff. So um, put the message out there. I've jumped on my Facebook or whatever it is. Um, what is it that I want to get back from the message? Do I want to get a number of visitors? Do I want to get a number of page visits? Is that what I'm looking for? Do I just want people to come and have a look at my website? Um, do I need a certain number of views? Do I want a certain number of comments? Okay, what, how am I going to say whether it's successful, whether I get people participating? Do I just want people to read it or do I want people to click on it and act on it? All right, so I need to be really clear about that from the beginning so that I've got a very clear measure of success. Okay, what works, what doesn't? Um, I might start thinking about, did I get the right number of shares? Okay, because what I might be doing is I might be creating an image or a bit of a story and I want people to share it around and distribute it across the internet and I can see how many shares I got. So do I want them to share it on or do I want people to come and use it or do I want people to click on it, read it, view it, you know, what is it that I want? Okay, there's no specifics here. It comes down to what your um, objectives names are um, and making sure that you're getting the bang for buck. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, if I've gone to all this effort, how many emails or inquiries did I want to get? Okay, do I want people inquiring about my product or service? If I've had that many visits, how many did I want to turn into a warm lead? All right, does one thing lead to the next? Did I just want them to come and be aware of us and share it on? Or do I want to get a certain number of emails and then start thinking about, you know, how do we convert it over? Um, I might start thinking about, you know, uh, with the comments, you know, how many and what type. You know, how many, what type, you know, there could be all sorts of information there. I want people to, you know, agree with a point of view, challenge a point of view, what I want to have happen. Um, and I need to maybe think about, you know, how many phone calls I want to get offered, etc. So I've always got to think about, well, how am I going to distract that? Okay, where do I get the number from? Um, if I know that I'm getting 10 phone calls a day on a regular basis for my, cust uh, for my company, I run an advertising campaign, then what I should be saying is, well, I expect that to go from 10 to 15 and then come up with some way to measure it over the, you know, the time of that campaign. All right, so if I wanna know about engagement, which is what we're really talking about here, engagement, I wanna get down to a position where I can see how many people is my message reaching? So how far out did it go? How many people got hit, et cetera? And if you look at things like Facebook, it's really clear, it'll tell you exactly how many people you're reaching, right? They will give you the numbers, and it's only a couple of hours behind, you can really watch it spike, they can give all sorts of data on that. Um, very good in that regard. A newspaper goes out, obviously you're relying on circulation stats, um, which may, you know, up to you how you wanna take it. They tell you what the readership is, they told you how many newspapers they put out there. Um, that sort of gives you a bit of a guide. Um, Facebook will actually track exactly, which is why above the line, below the line gets a little bit funky there, um, and why we sometimes pretty much going through the line these days. All right, so what happens is we've, we, we've put it on Facebook, we've put the advertisement out there, um, we know how many people it reached. The next question is, well, um, how many orders came back or, or how many inquiries came back from that content delivery? Um, the great thing about uh, social media and uh, online is you can have a click link for the campaign and you can see who came to the page normally and who clicked the campaign link in the email address we had came out. So you can actually track things very separately and see what's happening, um, how many people are clicking on the Facebook page and following up for more information, etc. how many of them clicked and then left an email address for, you know, for, for later follow-up. Okay, so you start to get some really absolute figures coming through. Um, and then obviously, how many, um, you know, how many phone calls did we receive? Is there an uplift in those sort of things? Okay, so we really have to track those things. Keep a track of it at regular intervals, okay? Make sure that someone's responsible for gathering that information and then putting it in some sort of spreadsheet, table, or database so that you've got the information ready. You can track it at relevant times. Don't leave it till the end of the month or something. Um, with some of these campaigns, it might be day to day, okay? You might be running a short term, um, high tempo promotion. You're highly promoting it and you want to see, you know, hour to hour, day to day, exactly what's taking place. 
Okay, making sure that content is being reviewed by looking back over the data, take a look and see, well, what's working, what's not working. Okay, we put it on that platform and nothing happened. We put it on this platform and it was fantastic. Okay, this can be achieved often by using different URLs or different links for people to click on. So you can actually track exactly where this information came from. Once again, um, some of the social media platforms are very good at automatically providing you this data so you can see who clicked through from where and what happened. Um, and then make sure that you're, you're talking through this with your team members and making any adjustments that you need to make to make sure that you're putting yourself back to where it's effective and not wasting your money on those areas. If, if nothing's happening, stop spending money on it or come back and have a look and see if you can review um, and, and see where you want to go with that. All right, cool. Make sure you do that. You'll get your monitoring engagement um, and making sure you're tracking your success. If you don't do that, you're going to throw a whole lot of money into the ocean and then wonder why you don't have any left. Make sure right place, right time, right message, right audience for the right cost. All right, good luck with that. Um, enjoy your media planning.